Hi, I'm Tim Reed. Have you ever felt like you were missing something? Like there's something more to life than you're currently experiencing? Well, stick around because we're going to look at what God says about life and the best way to live it. Welcome to Life Change. Our scripture that we've been using for this series is Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. It says this, This day I call heaven and earth as a witness against you, that I've set before you life and death, blessings and curses. And the encouragement from the scripture says this, Now choose life. Yeah. How awesome that is. What we've talked about, it's a choice. We have a choice on how to live our life. Do we choose to... Uh, to look for the good in things? Do we choose Jesus? Do we choose to look for the good in, in things that come our way? Or do we choose to, to always look for the bad? How many of you have ever met anyone who has always chose to look for the bad? Are those people nice people to hang around with? Is that, is that the people that you want to be your friends? So as Christians, how should we choose to live? Should we choose to look for the good in things? Or should we choose to look for the bad in things? I believe that we should choose to look for the good. Amen. And so this morning, um, we're going to be talking about what the breath of God is. The whole series we've been talking about how it, how it takes us from, from being in a, in a dry place to experiencing freedom in Jesus. But this morning, at, at its base, it, it is the Holy Spirit. And when you mention the Holy Spirit, a lot of times... In some traditions or some, some, some different religious organizations or groups, they kind of step back when you mention the word Holy Spirit. Or in our English Bible, it's, it's translated spirit in some places. In some places, it's translated ghost, right? So if you weren't raised hearing the word when somebody says, you know, I got a Holy Ghost, it, it kinda, it could kinda, you can understand where it could kind of freak people out, right? But this morning, what we're going to do is we're going to look through the Bible because the Holy Spirit is not something that just appeared in Acts chapter 2. Right? I believe in one God existing in three persons. It's the Father. We don't have a problem with that, right? The Son. And the Holy Spirit. Many times in life, we try to live with a two-thirds God. And I believe that's why many of us a lot of times feel like we're choking spiritually. We feel like we're always on a, on a resuscitator trying to, get, trying to feel alive on the inside. And this morning what, what I want to do is I want to, I want to open up the, the word to you and just we're going to look at what the word spirit, what the word ghost is, is translated. I believe it's in our Bible over 800 times. And in the Old Testament... How many of you, let me, let me just say this. How many of you know that the Bible was not originally written in English? And my grandpa always told me, you know, if, if the King James Version was good enough for Peter and Paul, it's good enough for me. And I didn't have the heart to say anything about it, right? <laughs> but <laughs> to know that the Old Testament books, the original transcripts, 
You know, it didn't happen in England. It was not, it's not English language. It was written in Hebrew. And those, the, many of those are still around today, the Hebrew. And they were translated into the English language. Now, I want to, just for a couple of examples, if you'll we'll turn in your Bible to Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. So all the way back in the beginning, we find the Holy Spirit mentioned. And it says this. It says, Now the earth was formless and empty, Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Now, that word that's translated there into spirit is a word, a Hebrew word called ruach. Can y'all say that with me? Say ruach. 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 You got to have that little ah at the end of it from the Hebrew language. But what that means, in essence, is a wind, a breath, a violent exhalation. Blast of breath. So let's reread that scripture again. And let's just place a wind of breath. It says, Now the earth was formless and empty, and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the wind of God, the breath of God, moved or hovered over the waters. Now in the New Testament, the New Testament was not originally written in Hebrew. It was originally written in Greek because that was the prominent language of that, the time when that was written. Now, the Greek word that is translated in our scriptures for spirit or ghost is pneuma. Can everybody say pneuma? Pneuma. You can go ahead and put that uh, definition up. Pneuma. Now, it's not penuma, it's pneuma. And it's this. It says, a current of air, a blast of breath, a strong breeze. Now, scripture scripture to uh, illustrate that is John 6, 63. And it says this. The spirit or the breath or the wind of God gives what? Let's read that together. The spirit gives life. And what does it say next? The flesh counts for what? Nothing. Nothing. Is that not something that we've been talking about? Our efforts, as Pastor talked about in week number one, our paddling in the boat, our efforts... Count for nothing without the Spirit or the wind of God, the breath of God blowing on us. The rest of the scripture reads, the Spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you are what? Spirit in their life. The Bible that you hold in your hand is not just a book filled with a bunch of stories or good plans, good ideas. It is a book that holds the power to accomplish what it says. Jesus says that. These words that I've given you, they're what? They're spirit in their life. So how do you describe that to somebody? Have you ever tried to, tried to describe the Holy Spirit to somebody who's never felt the Holy Spirit? Or never been around. It's almost like trying to describe the wind. Think about trying to describe the wind to someone who's never been outside. Well, um, you see, and it, you see effects of the wind, but you don't really know what it is until you what? Until you feel it. So, what do you say? Come on outside. Let me show you the wind. And the same thing is with the Spirit. It's not something that you, know, that you can describe to someone. I believe that God, God has from the beginning wanted us as people to literally feel His presence. Because more can be done in the presence of God in just one second than years and years and years of our own fruitful efforts, right? Right? So there's a few things that I want to talk about this morning concerning the wind or the spirit. The wind is unseen. We always want to see things. How many of you remember the story of Thomas in the Bible, doubting Thomas? What did he want to see? He wanted to see Jesus' hands because he didn't believe he was risen. And we find in John 20, 29, it says this. Jesus told him, because you've seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. 
Many times we want to see things and we want to make sense out of it. We want to be able to figure things out. But one, one aspect of the Holy Spirit is something that we don't see. Number two, He's unpredictable. The wind is unpredictable. How many of you have ever watched a flag fly on a flagpole? Does it point the same way every day, throughout the entire day? What happens? The wind shifts, it changes. And so it is with the Spirit. The message never changes. But the approach always changes. And Jesus says this in um, John 3, 8. It says this. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone who's born of the Spirit. How many of you know that God does not always do things the same way every time? He chose one time to speak through a burning bush, right? But he did speak through the bush, right? Many people, I believe if probably if that happened today, somebody would start a church and call it Church of the Burning Bush, right? And the only way that you would be able to hear from God is if there was a bush burning, right? And if you didn't, if you didn't hear from the bush, then you're not of God. If you didn't hear from the burning bush, then you must be going to hell. Because God spoke to me through the bush, right? But God chose to do that one time, right? And then he's spoken to people in different ways, right? I hate to pick on poor Moses, but God spoke to him the first time to do what? To get water out of the rock. To strike the rock to get water out of it. So what did he do the next time God asked him to speak to the rock to make water come out? He struck it. Because we are, he is just like we are. We want God to do things the same way. The same way every time. To speak the same way through the same folks. The same, the same you know, position standing. You know, I got to be in that spot with my hand lifted this way. Or I got to do this for God to, God to speak. But this morning I want you to know. Not only is the Holy Spirit or the wind of God, the breath of God unseen. But he is unpredictable. Because he's God. He chooses to do what he wants to do. When he wants to do it. Right? Now why do you think he does that? You know, the only thing that I can think of is because we can't pin him down and say, you know, God, you got to do it this way. This is our system. You know, we're going to put a bush here in the altar. And when it sets on fire, that's going to be God speaking. And uh, as, long as, as long as the bush is talking, then everybody's happy. Now, that's a pretty crazy illustration. But many of us do that. We think God has to do a certain thing in a certain way because it, it was what he did many years ago. But he don't, sometimes he may not choose to do it in that way. So God is what? Unseen. God the Spirit is unseen. He's unpredictable. And number three, he is powerful. A few months ago, there was, there was uh, some tornadoes that came through our area. And that is just wind, guys. And it devastated everything in its path. Wind can be powerful. I'm, I'm very surprised that, you know, you look at when hurricanes come ashore and all the damage that they do. And it's, it's wind. And, and the Bible, and God speaks of himself and the, and the spirit as wind. I believe that the, the power that we need to accomplish what God's called us to do only comes through the spirit. It only comes from his breath. As in the beginning when he spoke and from his breath, creation took place. I believe the same Holy Spirit, the same wind and breath of God that breathed and trees came into being. And things were created. I believe that same breath is here today. Amen. That can blow on your situation. It can blow on your, your sicknesses. It can blow on your marriage. It can blow on anything that you're dealing with today. The same creative power, the same spirit, that breath of God. 
How many of you ever heard of a, a guy by the name of Charles Finney? He was a, a revivalist. I believe over a, a half million people were saved under his ministry. Charles Finney had an issue with the Holy Spirit. He was a very intellectual person. Many of you may not know that he went to school to be a lawyer. But he had a desire deep inside of him for something more. And it wasn't long before that desire caused him to lay down his preconceived ideas of what the Spirit is. How many of you know that just because somebody in a church tells you something that it is not true? Or that it is true? Sometimes people just learn things because the tradition's handed down and they just do it. I'm not knocking it. But it may just not be the Bible. But Charles Finney, he came and he, and he wrote this. And I'm going I'm to have this put up here on the screen. He said this. And this is when he received the Holy Spirit. And this, af- this is after some struggles with it. Because he couldn't understand it. But he said this. But as I turned and was about to take my seat by the fire. He was at his house. He wasn't in the church. I received a mighty baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit descended upon me in a manner that seemed to go through me, body and soul. I could feel the impression like a wave of electricity going through and through me. Indeed, it seemed to come in waves of liquid love, for I could not express it in any other way. Now understand, this is a guy, he's just trying to use words to describe. It's like trying to describe the wind. And then he says this. Next slide. It seemed like the very breath of God. Now why do you think it seemed that way? Because it was. It was the breath of God. Being blown upon him. And he received power. That enabled him to do what? To stand up and everybody look at him and say, oh, you got the Holy Ghost? And you're the greatest? Let's all look at the guy with the Holy Ghost? No. What did I say earlier? Half a million people came to know the Lord through the ministry of this man. And it wasn't by his own efforts. Jesus said it himself. Our our flesh is, is fruitful. But the Spirit gives life. Now, to point to some other scripture, I'm not going to put it up, but Acts chapter 2. What happened? You know the story. Jesus had told his disciples to go and to wait because you will be endued with power when the Holy Spirit comes. Why did he tell them that? Because he knew that there was no way that they would be able to accomplish the work that he had called them to do without the Spirit. Being active in their life. Just like today. There's no way that I can do what I'm called to do. There's no way that you'll be able to do what you're called to do. Without the breath of God. Breathing upon you and empowering you to do that. So what happened after the wind. Remember a sound is a mighty Russian what? Wind. And it came. What happened after that? They went out and did what? It was a man that preached, right? How many people came to know the Lord? 3,000. In that one day. Now, was that human effort? Was that just his smarts? Or was that the breath of God? It was God. So, so why do we many times want to push away that part of, of God? Just because we don't quite understand everything about it. I'm going to tell you. You're not always going to understand how healings take place. I don't. I don't have to. You're not always going to understand everything. But if our God was a God that we could get through our mind and think about and totally understand. You know, I really, I wouldn't want a God like that. Because it would be a pretty pretty senseless, senseless God, you know. Speaking of my brains, you know, you think about if, if I could understand everything, who would want a God that you could that you could wrap around and figure it all out? 
Spirit is unseen, He's unpredictable, and He's powerful. And He's powerful. So, what is the breath of God breathing on us? Romans chapter 8, verse 11 in the New Living Translation says this The Spirit of God, the wind of God, the breath of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, lives in you. I want you to understand Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. That's Ruah that was spoken. And everything came into be. That power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells where? In you. And just as God raised Jesus from the dead. And he will give life to your mortal bodies. How many of you want to live life the way that God intended for you to live life? He will give life to your mortal bodies by the same, what? Spirit. By the same pneuma, right? By the same breath, the same wind. He will give that to you. So what are three things that we can do this morning? To experience the breath of God in the way that God God intended for us to. I believe that number one, we have to let go of our fears and misconceptions of what it is or what He is. I I know I mentioned it earlier, but so many people are weirded out when you mention the Holy Spirit because of different things that they've seen in life. But one thing we're going to do this morning is I want to look at, look at the Bible in Psalms 34, 4, and it says this. It says, I sought the Lord, and He answered me, and He delivered me from my fears. If you have fear this morning, all we have to do is seek God. And what will He do? He'll deliver you. He'll answer your fears. Number two is that we need to go all in. What does that mean, Tim? We, we, we sing an old song around here sometimes. It's called, I Surrender All. It means that we give our life over to Him. And totally surrender everything to Him. The Bible reads in Jeremiah 29, 13, it says this. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. So the the truth must be, you will not find me if you you don't seek me with your whole heart. How many of you this morning want to find God? And lastly, number three, we have to develop a close relationship with Him. An intimate friendship. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 14 says this. This is a benediction. Does everybody know what that is? It's a prayer. It's a blessing. It says, The amazing grace of the Master Jesus Christ, the extravagant love of God, the intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Understand it starts with Jesus. The amazing grace. That's our only way. We have to make that choice to follow Jesus. But then we have to learn to listen. How many of you have a hard time listening? I do. There's many times in life where I get busy and my poor wife, Stacy, she could, she could probably get up here and tell you several stories of her talking, pouring her heart out to me and I'm not even listening. Not that I mean to, but I've just got other things on my mind. Is there anybody in here like that? That's just, that's who I am and I, but I, I need help with that. But many times we begin to do things, we begin to do things and do life and, and, and have this. And even do ministry and neglect to listen to the Holy Spirit. Isaiah says this. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21. It says, whether you turn 
to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. How do we live a life full of the breath of God? How do we live life spiritually alive? I believe it's when we develop a close, intimate relationship with God, the Holy Spirit, or the breath of God, the wind of God. And we allow Him every day, moment by moment, to lead us. Many of us delegate and say, you know, the Holy Spirit only happens there at the church and the altar. If you believe that, you're not going to be able to accomplish what God's called you to do. You know when I need the breath of God and the wind of God and the Spirit of God to speak to me? Every day. In the morning when I wake up, listening to Him tell me what to do. Has anybody ever had a feeling, you know, I just shouldn't go there, I shouldn't do this, or I should do that? Haven't you ever found that it's best to listen to that? But many times we just push through. We just push through because we think we know better. Because we look at many times just the same things. But today, in closing, you have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. And this morning, I, I want to I want to beg you to choose life. The Bible tells us that we must choose to trust and place our faith in Jesus Christ to have eternal life. But I also believe that there's more to this life than many of us are experiencing. And to have that more, we must experience the breath of God on a daily basis. We must wake up in the morning with our ears wide open, listening to the urging of the Spirit and listening to the voice of God speak to us and leading us and guiding us. So let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice, God. Lord, that they would lay aside every misconception, Lord, or everything, God, that they may have been taught from different churches, Lord, and different organizations, God, about your spirit. And Lord, that they would open up your word and pray, God, that you would reveal yourself to them in a new way. And Father, I pray that they would once again surrender their entire being over to you, God. And Lord, and thirdly, I pray, God, that you would help them to develop an intimate relationship with you, a friendship, God. Lord, you said you're the friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And God, today, I pray that each and every one of us, Lord, including myself, Lord, would redevelop our friendship, God. Lord, would pray every day, Lord, that you would lead us and guide us into all truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.